something important, anything at all, so long as it was real. You, a consultant to the Barrier Reef, studying for 10,000 hours to understand why it takes 8,000 years to build something great. And maybe then you'd understand the correlation between all living things and the possibility that relation lay before us. So we could all stop running aground on these ship specks that dirty our vastness. You, best of all, brother, a paparazzo to the star systems, sneaking into cosmic soirees and snapping shots with a long-range Hubble lens to expose the imperfections of how a little more foundation could have led to an entire civilization growing in the gaps between their bright, pearly white dwarfs and how we are all made of the same great cascading clouds of potential floating in pillars of creation, breathing life into the bleak black to really, really broaden our event horizon. You. Picking on you now. <laughs> Deserve it. <laughs> Brother, I am sorry, but you have a little con man about me. <laughs> <laughs> Rugged, like an uppercut, but sophisticated, like Hollywood dreams of honourable thieves. However, I know, looks can be deceiving. So your mission is to help us believe by revealing our insecurities to show us how to let people in through even the most impenetrable of defences so we can all see the X-ray safe crackers hidden behind so many multi parts. Me? I want to be your knight in shining drama, drawing swords into complex sketches that portray the flaws in the kaleidoscope of battle speed stage, looking for a long-range Hubble lens we borrowed from this paparazzo of the star system so we could all stay as far away from ground zero as possible. Because nobody, nobody wants to be a zero in their own fantasy. Not even the stars. If you have ever seen those guys fighting, woo So much colour. <laughs> so while they're going supernova, we will all be mirable suns, teaching each other how to bathe in our own light. Thank you. Wandering from his fingers, animated by the groove of his transcendent life force. I did not perform in a production of The Tempest, which from the first spoken word was overshadowed by a real live tempest that howled and hurled and turned the ground into mud that we graded from solid to liquid to slurry to splat Atlantic Ocean. I did not pour pity on some poor soul whose possessions disappeared in the downpour, nor did I mourn the loss of old values that knew of the value of things. Mm. At Glastonbury 2005, I did not feel a massive upswelling of joy as I found a patch of dry hessian just <laughs> large enough to park my butt while John Otway played a selection of his hit. <laughs> nor was there a man who painted his own penis with the dots of Aboriginal walkabouts <laughs> that were luminously connected in the night with the dots on his similarly naked partner from the Valley of Fertility to the Hills of Plenty. At Glastonbury 2005, I did not sit ticketless at the gates of security, sincerely believing out loud my own story that a friend should be meeting us there. While my girlfriend consoled me out loud and said it was not the fault of the security volunteers, there was nothing they could do. 